Welcome to Speak. Emmanuel Acho is off today, but we're rolling with Super Bowl champion James Jones. Plus cracking. And two-time Super Bowl champion, Eagles all-time leading rusher, Pitt alumni, mm. Pitt Panther, mm. Harrisburg native. All decade. All team. decade. There you go. What would you she say? She don't need your help. Let her, let her know. She don't need your help. <laughs> what did she say? Yes, you know what I mean? We're going to be here for two hours <laughs> doing that, James. She don't need your you help. Know you know what? You will have to intro the show tomorrow and do my accolades. Our best bet. Yeah. Deal. Deal. Board of Trustees member. Yeah. Uh, let's start in Chicago. We're just over a month away from the NFL draft. Very exciting. The Bears have the number one overall pick, and they are expected to take quarterback Caleb Williams, especially after trading Justin Fields to the Steelers just a few days ago. We are looking forward to the NFL draft. We are looking forward to seeing Caleb Williams in the NFL and, of course, with the Bears. But, Shady, should Caleb Williams be all in on the Bears? Should he be all in? <laughs> What are we, yes, what are we talking about here? Listen, what are we talking if, about? If, see, the Bears are listening, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Because Caleb Williams and his pops, well, if they listen to me, that'd be a good team. <laughs> they don't. I'd never take Justin Fields. Anyway. You do want to be a GM. Yeah. Whatever team out there is lucky enough to have me, yeah. I'll get your team <laughs> on, a, on a great start. Oh, man. But no, when I say listen, as far as Caleb Williams and his dad spoke about this, like, what do we want? Mm -hmm. We don't want to be a great player in college and then we go to one of the worst teams in football. Because that's how it normally works. Yeah. They didn't want that. So what did the Bears do? Now, they have been a bad team for so, so many years, mm -hmm. but they changed the narrative now. Now they got some players there. They go out there and they get DeAndre Swift, who's a top three running back, in my opinion, especially yeah. with talent mm -hmm. and production from last season. They get, a, they get some solid tight ends. Then they go out there and they get some wide receivers. The year before, they get DJ Moore, right, who's a hell of a, hell of a player. Yeah. And then they get Keelan Allen, yeah. right, from the Chargers. So if you ask for a rookie to go into a situation to win, mm -hmm. It's got to be the Bears. And it reminds me of a, of a player that he reminds me of in Kansas City. Mm. When he came to the league, Patrick Mahomes, he had a lot of players around him. Now, he did sit for a year. Yeah. When you look at the, the, the guys like Jeremy Macklin before he left. You look at a guy like Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. And they look the same in college. So <laughs> if I'm Caleb Williams, I'm going there. I don't know how this could even be a conversation. I know that there is this idea that going to a bad team is, is a bad situation for a generational talent. Yeah. And you don't want to put yourself in a position where you could struggle early or could damage your career, which does happen to guys a lot. I, I, I can't imagine the talents that have been squandered by bad organizations, players that we blame for being responsible for losing when they really went into a bad situation. And we do give players a lot of grace. Yeah. But this is not Eli Manning coming in to the NFL. This is not John Elway. This is 2024. Mm -hmm. They did not have YouTube. They did not have <laughs> Twitter, Reddit, yeah. Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, for now. They did not have that. DoorDash. DoorDash. <laughs> they Sorry. did not have DoorDash. I love DoorDash. You're hungry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> order food, Jamie. <laughs> My point is, if you make a move like this and say that you're not going to an organization, you're not going to be met with the same reaction that you did in those years. It is a new time. Yes. And especially because we have, as recent, seen a player come out of college who left college at a much higher level as far as team success yeah. in Joe Burrow, uh -huh. had an incredible yeah. season himself, yeah and came in and went to Cincinnati that was not a good organization, yeah. and in his second year took that team to the Super Bowl. So as far as I'm concerned, the modern standard is set. Because yeah. he went there, and there was talks about if he should say he wasn't going to go there. And he said, no, 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 no. Not only am I an Ohio kid, I'm going to go to the team that drafts me, and I'm going to make them better. Yeah. And he did. Yes, he did. And we don't talk about, we did not talk about Joe Burrow the way that we talk about Caleb Williams. Mm -hmm. Now, I did. But everyone wasn't positive that Joe Burrow was going to go to the NFL and have the success that he did. Oh, no. So it is a dangerous game to play to put yourself in a position where you're saying, I'm not going to go to an NFL team. Yeah. I'm too good to do that. Well, yeah. well my, even with that, though, if, if Joe didn't have them type of players around him at such a young age, do we know if he wanted to go to the, to the Bengals? Because he came in there having a guy like um, Tyler Boyd. You talk about the, Green. Uh, A.J. Green. And, 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 the then, and then the running back, uh, Joe Mixon. Joe Joe. Joe Mixon was there. Yeah, yeah right. So... You have pieces around you where it's like, if I go to a team where nobody there, like, oh, yeah. do I really want to go there? So you look at Caleb, well, he's happy to be there. He's, embr he's embracing the, the, the opportunity to play with the Bears because the players they do have. So I, I love, I guess, the, um, the comparison with, with, with Joe, but if Joe didn't have them weapons over there, would he be willing to play in Cincinnati? Maybe, but 
He did go there. He did. And, he did. And, and they did. And he did make he them did better. Very well he changed better. that organization around. And we talk about the Bengals like they're a serious organization yes. now because of Joe Burrow. And he made all them boys point. better. And that's the blessing and curse about being the number one pick. Right. The blessing is you're going to make a lot of money mm -hmm. and you're going to have an opportunity to play in this league for a long time. And they are going to give you chance after chance after chance because it's always going to be an organization to say he went number one. He didn't work out over there. We could fix him. We could fix him. You're going to you're going to get chance after chance. But then again, the curse is you're going to a bad football team. They got the number one pick for a reason. But in this case, right? Talk about you it. are going to a great situation. There's not too many first overall picks that walk into a situation like Caleb Williams to the walk into. That's true. A big time all pro receiver in Keenan Allen. Another big time receiver in DJ Moore. A big time running back in Swift. Two really good tight ends in Clement and Everett. Like, a good offensive line. You are going into a really good situation Solid. being the number one overall pick. So I don't know how this man could even sit there and fix his lips or even be thinking about not going to the Chicago Bears. This right here is a blessing for a young quarterback to go in a situation like this with the people around him. Caleb Williams is going into a very blessed situation being the number one overall pick. I don't know that I would say it's a great situation. Great. But I, I don't know What's if I'm going to agree. It it's a offense? good situation. Why is it a What's great situation? What's not great about it on the offense? Well, I mean, this is, this is on paper. There's lots of situations that look good on paper. I think it's a good situation. But where I would agree with you is, Normally, they are going to the worst team the worst in football, team. or they're going to a team that has had to give up a lot of assets mm -hmm. to move into that situation. The Bears weren't the worst team in football. No. The worst team in football got the Bears the number one overall pick. Yeah, Panthers. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so, so he's actually not going to the worst situation possible. Okay. Normally, you are going to the worst team in the league, or you're going to a really bad team that's had to use assets to move up to get you. So it is a, a better situation than it normally is when you are the number one overall pick. The Chicago Bears were not that bad of a team. They were bad, but they weren't the worst team in the league. They got that because of the move they made last year. So their, their pick is ninth? One and, and they have another pick. But I'm saying their pick, the ninth pick, is, is that's, that's how bad they did this year. Yes. I mean, so they... <laughs> I mean, they're, no, they weren't a good team this year, but they weren't the worst team in the league. I like, there, there's, there are they, literally worse they, places you could go. They did bad enough to be in the top 10 yeah. worst teams in football. Yes, but if you are the number one overall pick, you are usually going to the yeah. worst yeah. team yeah. in yeah. football. But this is, this is a blessing because usually you're coming from USC, Oklahoma, uh, Trevor Lawrence, Clemson, uh, Jared Goff, Cal, like you're used to playing with a lot of talent. Jared Goff was the number one pick. His starting receivers was Kenny Britt and Tavon Austin. Mm. What are you supposed to do with that? Mm -hmm. Trevor Lawrence came in, Marvin Jones, LaVishka Chenault, and Laquan Treadwell. Well, First like, <laughs> like what you supposed to do with that, though? This man is coming into Pro Bowl wide receivers. And all pros, that's a good point. Run, a Veterans, really good running back yeah. that can run and catch out of the Pro Bowl running back. Pro Bowl running yeah, back. Like, a good offensive line. He is coming into a blessed situation and that a lot of these superstar quarterbacks that go yeah. number one overall do not walk now, into. I, I like the situation. And another thing is, that division ain't super hard. You got the Vikings that's up and down, right, with no quarterback Lions, now. Lions, Packers. Right? You got the Lions that's really, really good. And then the Packers, the young team, they did well last year. Let's see if they do it again. So, no I like that move. I also think when you consider the place that he's going, and we've talked about this before, if you can win in Chicago, that's legendary. Like, they're going to treat you different for the rest of your that's life. True. It's only certain it, places like that. There's, a, there's not that many places like that. The fan base there, that city, it is iconic. If you, and, and as a quarterback, if you're able to do that, to come to the Chicago Bears and turn that organization around, Especially turn it into an like offensive that's organization. A nice city. Yeah, Chicago's amazing. I, I, I love it, and I don't think that he should even consider not going there. But Deion Sanders mm -mm. is not necessarily a fan of Caleb Williams going from L.A. to Chicago, saying Chicago's cold, man. You got to think about that kind of stuff when you're taking a young man. Like, see, when you take a guy from Ohio State and you bring him to Chicago, okay, I could understand that. But from California to Chicago? Shady, what do you think about what Prime said? How much cold weather, will cold weather affect Caleb Williams in Chicago? I don't know. I mean, I, I I I hate to always go. Well, not always, but I hate to go against Prime, right? <laughs> it's like, well, Prime's the gospel. Do your job. What Prime say? That's what it is. But <laughs> for here, I, I just I don't agree with him. I mean, it's, we, we football players, yep. right? We we can't control the climate of the game. 
Listen, listen I, I, I'm from Pennsylvania, and it gets cold in Pennsylvania, but mm -hmm. I don't want to just play in the cold. But if I got to, ain't no sleeves. Let's go roll. Let's roll out. We gonna play. That's why it's hard for me to understand what he was saying because there's a lot of quarterbacks that that deal with the ball more than everybody. And and you look at a guy like Aaron Rodgers. He went from freaking California, mm -hmm. right, to Green Bay. Yeah. Talk about extreme Tom differences. Bay. So, listen, when you're a player and they paying you a certain amount of money, where the money at, where the check at, and I'm going to play for you. That's how it really works. We know Shady plays in the snow. Yeah, yeah I'm about that. This right here, you know, Deion Sanders, I, I think that's what's wrong with our game today, right? It's a lot of people that's soft. It, it, it is. It's a, it's a lot of people that's soft. The NIL deals is making players soft. You could transfer if things get hard. It's a lot, a lot of stuff that's going on nowadays, right? Deion Sanders had one of my favorite Hall of Fame speeches of all time. He stood up there and he said, a lot of people said I missed a lot of tackles. He said, but I done tackled every bill my mama done gave me. He did say that. Yeah, he did say Deion that. Sanders, you come from the slums. I know if you had to take care of your mama, you weren't worried about who drafted you going to the cold, going here, going there. You was going to do your job at a high level, make some money to take care of your mama. So, for me, this is absolutely crazy. I don't care where these kids go. We got to stop being so soft on these kids. Dion, you coach in Colorado. So, you mean to tell me you can't walk into none of these kids' houses in Florida, none of these kids' houses in California, none of these kids that live in warm places because Colorado cold? So, so what are we talking about? At the end of the day, you have to go out there and you have a job to do. I don't care how cold it is. I was a young kid from California, went to San Jose State. They said my name to Green Bay. I done played in negative 20, negative 30, whatever it is. You have to go out there and play. That, that is what it is, right? These kids spend their whole life working to get to the National Football League. Now we worrying about where we going to play? I don't care where I go. Yeah, Just true. let me yeah. go fulfill my dream, dream and play in yeah. the National Football yeah. League. Cold, shady, might not wear sleeves. I'm putting on a hoodie, <laughs> sleeves, and all that, but I'm going to play. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you got to go do your job, man. This is a dream come true. We worry about I, how and, cold and our another thing is like uh, um, Patrick Mahomes, right? <laughs> Texas boy. Come on, man. With the Texas Tech. Have you ever played in, uh, in uh, Missouri? Yeah, Kansas City is... is oh, very, I didn't even know that. I got very, there. I didn't know how cold, cold Kansas City was. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. It's, <laughs> right? And I wasn't playing. I'm like, y'all freezing. So it just shows you that, yo, if my dream is to get to the NFL, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there. And then when I get there, I ain't going to be asking, well, oh. man, it's going to be cold when I get No, it's my dream. So it, man. I'm here. I hear what Prime is saying. I, I got to just go against it because yeah. it's the dream to play in the NFL. I don't hear what Prime is. I, I mean, I, I don't... <laughs> I, I understand what he's saying. I'm not passing on Caleb Williams just because he played at USC and it's kind of warm here sometimes. It'd be cold out here in California too. Not not Chicago, not Green Bay oh. cold, but I, I, I don't know. I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I did my time in the cold in the winters. It gets cold there. Yeah. It snows, it, it, it's freezing rain. Shady played there. You know what it is. It's cold there. It is a fall winter sport. If you can't play in the cold, why are you playing football? Yeah. There's basketball. There's there's bowling. You know what I mean? Like there's indoor sports. A lot of indoor sports. <laughs> you go, you in the wrong sport. I don't under, I don't understand it. Obviously, I understand that it is harder to play the quarterback position when it is cold out. Aaron Rodgers seemed to figure it out. Very well. Brett Favre seemed to figure it out. Very well. Tom Brady seemed to figure it out. Very, very, it's very, cold very and well. the Patriots yep. have played the snows there. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I mean, cold I don't, this is an outdoor, for the most part, winter sport. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to play in the cold. You hey. have to figure it out. And if it gets too cold, hey, man, you know what to do with that ball. Run the ball. No, 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 no. no. The other stuff with the ball. Oh, let the air out? Hey, man. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Yeah, hey, look. I just hey, they try, to, they try to get my boy, <laughs> but it happens a lot in the NFL. Yeah. Hey, it's cold out there. Hey, do the thing with the ball. What you mean? <laughs> hey. Stop. That ball, get that ball. Oh, yeah, you ready, you ready I don't know nothing about that. Oh, you ready now. I'm just Stop saying, you brought, you brought this Stop up in the meeting, piss. Shady, though. Oh, my goodness. It would be too hot to play, too. I'm about to say that. There's yeah. the, 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 the South, Beach, South Beach flu is a real thing. Obviously, there's some other factors involved in that, but... You playing in Buffalo, you playing in New England and go down to Miami in, in December. Go to Duval. And, you know and, what? And that, in that humidity, yeah, it'd, be, we, it'd be too hot to play as well. We, we would play um, the Bills. We would go play um, the Dolphins, right? Mm -hmm. At least twice a year. And we want to play them early in the year. No doubt, yes, right? At it, home. Because, because on the, on the road. when we go there late in the year, it might be hot as hell in Miami, right? Mm -hmm. And you think it's cool because we're going to a hot place. Yeah. No, we're not used to it. 
you getting all type of cramps. You pulling hamstring because it's so hot. The humidity is crazy, mm -hmm. right? And you're not drinking as much as you're supposed to because you're thinking you're good because you're in Buffalo. You get to Miami, everybody's hot, mm -hmm. and we hated it. So people always talk about just the cold, but even playing the heat and that sun, that matters too. No question. I mean, even playing in Mile High, you up there breathing yep. super hard. Oh, yeah, I hate to play up there. <laughs> yeah, like that, that's part of the home for the But fans. that's football, though. That that's my thing. Football. Like, that makes it special. Cold, hot, not, you can't breathe, you can't breathe, no <laughs> oxygen, that's part of the game. I do understand what you're saying. Of it. Chicago oh. is cold and it is windy. It is not ideal Chicago conditions is cold. sometimes. One of my Chicago. coldest games. Oh, Chicago it's, it's, it's is that cold. wind started blowing. Yeah. Ooh. Is Ohio State cold? Yes. Yes, Ohio you know State what? is cold. You know so he just, the Bears just had a cold weather quarterback. How'd it work out? Yeah, he, I mean, he's not good in any weather. But look, I will say this he though. He was good at Ohio State. What everybody's gonna house Hey, look, <laughs> bro. We play in Chicago one year. I played Chicago. I will lie to you, man. Listen, I like the cold. Michael Vick was the quarterback. We yes. were losing. We were losing. We were getting blown out. Mm -hmm. I look at Deshaun Jackson Mac and uh, and uh, Jerry Mack. I said, "Look, brothers, this game over with, man. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Let's get out of no here." Doubt. <laughs> I was in Chicago 2007, and it was negative 25 Ooh. with the wind chill, right? And we was 13 and two at the time. Not playing for nothing, everything was sold up, and it was negative 25 out there, one of the coldest games ever. But at the end of the day, you know what we had to do, Joy Joy? Play football. We had to trot out there and play football. Oh, you right. Man, these are right. kids' dreams, man. You, you are waiting to hear your name called no matter what team it's on. Dion, chill, bro. He, he'll be all right. I'm excited to watch. Coming up, LeBron James led the Lakers to a blowout win last night. But can he still lead the Lakers on a playoff run? That's next on Speak. Don't forget, you can check us out every day on the Fox Sports channel on Sirius XM. The King. It's time for a big story sponsored by Hampton by Hilton. When nothing else in life is 100% guaranteed, it matters where you stay. Hilton for the stay. The Lakers blew out the Hawks last night and are now the ninth seed in the West. LeBron James had a good game with 25 points and 10 assists, and Anthony Davis has a theory on why LeBron is playing so well right now. Let's take a listen. You know, Bron's Bron, obviously, is, you know, it's that time of the year. Uh, they've been shooting the ball extremely well, they've been attack mode, finding guys. Um, you know, he's been locking in defensively. Um, so it's, it's, it's that time of the year, you know, especially for us. You know, uh, where every game is playoff game. So, uh, around this time of the year, you know, he tends to really lock in and, and get the job done. We've got Fox NBA analyst Slick Rick Buecher on with us again. Bang. Welcome back, Slick. Thank you. All right. Can they do it? Can they do it, Slick? No. Can LeBron do it? Can no. LeBron lead the Lakers on a playoff run? Hey, I talk about I'll you. I'll say it a third time. AD talks about LeBron, just so you know that. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Very high praise. No. Uh, no, the answer is no. Midnight clock has struck. <laughs> it's midnight. Mm. All right? I know, I know what the answer is. Wait a minute. What about, I know, Shady, I know where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he did it last year. He did it last year. Hey, why not? Anyway, can do it again. Right. I got news for you. This ain't last year. Mm. This is not last year. This is not last year's team. Why not? If you look at what they did at the trade deadline last year and what they did after the trade deadline, it was a different team. They went from five games under 500 to, by the end of the season, five games over 500. Mm -hmm. They were rolling coming into the playoffs. Right now, even with the, the, uh, the blowout of the Hawks, they're seven and six. They are just muddling along. And if you look at what they faced to get there, to do what they did, getting to the Western Conference Finals. Mm -hmm. In hindsight, Shady again, Shady's gonna say, well, did you predict that they were gonna do what come they were on, gonna do? Come no, on I now. did not. But I can dissect after the fact, and they happen to have a play-in game against the Minnesota Timberwolves at home mm -hmm. with no Rudy Gobert, no Jaden McDaniels, mm -hmm. no Nas Reed. So they didn't have any, Minnesota didn't have any of the defense that they had. And they won that in overtime at home. Yeah. I remember that game. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then they catch the Memphis Grizzlies, who are without Steven Adams, again, one of their big physical enforcers, and John Morant without him in game six, and they close them out. So if you're telling me that you, if, if you had the same team, if you're coming in with the same team, you'd still need the same identical things to happen. Do I think that they could get out of the play-in? Do I think that they could upset the Oklahoma City Thunder? I think those things are actually possible. Mm. 
But I don't know that they're going to face the Oklahoma City Thunder. They could very well face the Denver Nuggets. We know how that's going to go. Yeah. Or the Minnesota Timberwolves, a healthy Minnesota Timberwolves you, team. Okay. See, I'm glad you brought them yeah, up. Yeah. All right. Because yeah. they are doing well. And man, and them, they are balling. Yes. But. Yes. But, 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 but. Do you feel confident that the Timberwolves have stayed as consistent? Do I feel a what? We got two teams that are inconsistent. Uh, the hold Lakers on, hold on. and the Minnesota Timberwolves. Well, what I was saying to you is, is, is I don't look at the Timberwolves. I, I feel like I, I've seen this before, right? G good team. They're playing well right now, right? Playing a lot better than we all expected them to play. Yeah. But how long is that going to last? You see what I'm saying? Because if you're getting the playoffs, no, no. If you're getting the playoffs, though, right? And you go from an experienced team to not experienced team, right? You get from a team that's been here before, yeah. that know how to play when, it, when it's tight, compared to a team that's not. Compared to a lot of young talent, and we, and we going off with this talent compared to going off the experience. And I'm going to bet money on LeBron James and the Lakers to get that done over the, hmm. the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves or the Oklahoma City Thunder? You think they could beat it at one? See, I think that they're level. I do. This. I do. I, I believe that healthy, the Timberwolves, and their record reflects this, are just too talented. And now you've had this year, as opposed to last year, Mike Conley came on yep. halfway through last year, mm -hmm. right? He's been there a whole year. Big vet. They added Kyle Anderson, mm -hmm. adds to their IQ. You're going to have Jade McDaniels available. Mm -hmm. You're going to have Defense. Rudy Gobert. Yep. You should have Carl Anthony Towns back That's by right. the time the playoffs start. Right. I just, when I look at that, the one thing that the Lakers have, and, and, I, and the reason why I believe that they could beat the Thunder, is because they can physically bully those boys, as we've seen them do during the regular season. I do not believe that they can phys physically bully the Minnesota Timberwolves. Well, the only thing about the Timberwolves, though, is maybe because I bet on them before. Yeah. <laughs> I know them very, very well. <laughs> They are a good team. They are playing good defense, good. right? Good. And Ant-Man is, is, is... Number one defense in the league. Right. They play good defense. But on offense, they take a lot of bad shots. Yeah. And a lot of bad moments when they're taking them bad shots. And I've seen these boys being up big points and lose lead because they play good defense, but they taking bad shots. They got the lead, shot clock. They shoot at 20 seconds like this. Why are we doing that? So when I look at the game, right, I look at a couple of things. You talk about the talent. That's the first thing I look at. They got talent in the matchups. Yeah. Look at the defense. But then as far as the experience, I've seen this team do well. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, where'd they go? What happened to them? So when you ask me about the Lakers and LeBron James, they haven't been consistent. Mm -hmm. But I will say this from last year. When they needed to get these wins, they got them in big moments when we weren't expecting that. Mm -hmm. And I think that plays on the experience part of basketball. I don't, I don't think I can say no. I don't know if midnight struck. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if, if it ended early. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if it went late either mm -hmm. this party can go either way it's the king mm. it is the king and he's averaging 25.7 rebounds and eight assists Ooh, 80 40. That 80 40 big, yeah. big age that boy, that boy nice give him his credit slick he nice i mean delos look at well. him i i don't i just can't i can't say no i'm not sure and i do agree with you Last year isn't completely reflective of this year. They did turn things around. AD was playing at a super high level going into the postseason. It all sort of came together. Yeah. But yeah. I can't just say no. Can I throw yeah. one more thing at you? Yes. If, uh, if things stand, AD, well, AD has already played more games this year. Mm -hmm. Way more consistent. Than he has in any one yeah. regular season since he came to LA. Yeah. And LeBron is on pace to play more games, regular season games, mm -hmm. in one season this yeah. year than he has in any season since yeah. he okay. came to L.A. Last year, LeBron missed 13 games at the end of the season mm -hmm. yes. and then came back and played eight. Yeah. So it was a refresher for the king. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's not in the same place. And if you watch Anthony Davis and how he's played over the last two, three weeks, the load that he has been carrying as the backbone to cover for LeBron defensively, D'Lo defensively, Austin Reeves defensively, it is getting yeah. to him. He looks worn down. And where they are, they can't afford to give those guys any rest. So again, it's just, you're asking more of this team this year than you did last year. Yeah. And, and they're not as equipped as I see it, yeah. as they were last see, year. I see, um, I don't think Slick really believes the no because he just he said no he said midnight has struck mm -hmm. and then he says i wouldn't be surprised if the 
Lakers beat the Thunder. Oh, you be listening. He be listening, though. They are the number one and number two seed. So if we're sitting up here saying we're not surprised if the Lakers can beat the number one and number two seed. Hold on. I only got one. In the NBA. And not only that, we eventually got to go off track record and resume and all of that. That matters. James, I don't care how many he lost. I don't care how many he won. The man has showed you when it's this time of basketball, like AD just said, LeBron James shows up way more than any of these dudes in the playoffs. Come on. He came from the play-in Preach. game last year to the Western Conference Final. I understand all that stuff, right? Different team. These people came after the tra- de- trade deadline. Mm-hmm. A sprained ankle could happen tomorrow. Anything can happen. But LeBron Preach. James has showed you that I can take you there mm-hmm. with so much against me, I can take you there. So I cannot count out LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers because I do believe with you, Slick. I do think the Thunder, the Timberwolves, the Pelicans, the Kings, I do think teams in the playoffs, I don't care about the regular season, Bron in the playoffs can find a way to get those done. Not the Kings. I understand that. This is playoff basketball now. James. Different Brown Brown. Do you really yeah. believe, Slick? I really believe that this is not last year. That we're asking too much. And this is why, actually, and Joy, you kind of know this because we've, we've, we've worked together. This is why I'm here. Because <laughs> this is a public service announcement for all of you who want to say it could happen. It could happen. Dreams still happen. And there's a fine line between dreams and reality. And I am here to paint that. I mean, I seem to recall last last year, you know, everyone was telling me I was crazy. Every single day. About what? Week in and week out. Oh, what's wrong? But this no, I'm, about the heat. I'm just, I'm, I was just gonna say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just waiting to see Slick's response on this next question because off of what he just said, I want to see his response. Well, yes, let's, stay in, let's <laughs> stay in the Western Conference you know for a second. Yeah, the Warriors are it. battling go for a playoff spot, but they took an L last night to the Knicks. Golden State has now lost four out of five, uh, five four out of their last six games, Ooh. and are now the 10th seed in the West. Steph Curry was very direct about his team's playoff spot, saying, who cares what seed you are in if we play like we did? Yes. Ooh, slick! Wait, why you, why you keep... That's bit of a, that's bit of a brutal team, watch. I know, but I want to hear what oh, he's going to say. Because right. he ain't a believer in the Lakers. We all pop energy with the yeah. Warriors. So just... You did pick the, mm. the Warriors. What? As to a come team, out of the play-in. To, come out of the to play-in. have the best chance, the best winning chance the West. of those four teams. Of winning the West. Of winning the West. Why, Slick? Absolutely. So, uh, Absolutely. This, by the way, this question is for our producer. <laughs> I, I did not approve this. Uh, it's a loaded question. Are, are, it is a very loaded question, which yeah. I do not agree with. Are the Warriors cooked? No. Mm-hmm. Cooked? Cooked I, means they're done. Done, right. yes. Means where, they have no shot. Where are they going? Well, I'm just saying. We, we just <laughs> I'm just answering the question. Which I know, is, I'm ready, are ready they to cooked? Okay. No, they yeah. are not cooked. Yeah. They are no more cooked off of losing to the New York Knicks. Did not play well. Then they were a shoe in to win the Western Conference Finals because two weeks ago they beat the Milwaukee Bucks by 35 points. Mm-hmm. Neither one of those games is an indicator of who the Warriors are. The reason I picked them last uh, yesterday. Yes. Mm-hmm in order uh, as the team most likely among those four teams to come the out Mavs, and play in. The Mavs, the Lakers, Suns, yeah, Suns and uh, Warriors. Uh, to come, yes, to, to make it to the Western Conference Finals is because of their potential. And if you saw the way that uh, Steve Kerr ran that game yesterday, look, Tom Thibodeau was playing to win the game. He played it like a playoff game. Uh, Josh Hart never came off the floor. Yeah. He played all 48 minutes. Miles McBride played 46 and a half. Gotta do what you got to do. Golden State Warriors played 10 players in that game. Wow. Nobody got close to 40 minutes. Like, Steve is still fine-tuning who they are going to be. Because the fact is, they can't get anywhere. They're going to be in the play-in. They understand that at this point, right? So why am I going to kill Steph to win this one game? Mm. Whereas New York is still playing for seeding, they got to they gotta maintain what they're doing in order to still have home court advantage mm, in the first round. Point. And it's way more important to the Knicks where they are going into the playoffs than it is for the Golden State Warriors. So this is disappointing. And I knew, I knew last night as I was, I was like, <laughs> oh, I know what we're talking about tomorrow <laughs> because of what I said yesterday. And yes, do I think they're vulnerable? Yes. Do I think they're done? No. I don't think they're done either. This this doesn't look like it is their year, though. Hmm. Hmm. 
I, I again. Did it look like? No. It did. It didn't look like it was. It didn't look like it was the Lakers' year last year. And these are obviously two completely different teams and two con completely different makeups. Yeah. But their inconsistency is is concerning as well. Yeah. I, I don't think that one game is reflective of it, what they're going to do in the postseason. To your point, any more than them beating the Bucks by 30 is a re reflection of what they're going to do either. But can, what are they doing consistently right now as they're going into this? space that they're going to be in in the play in the play in and then in the playoffs yep. do you feel good about where they're going i don't i can't write them off i can't say that they wouldn't win a playoff series any more than i would the lakers or any of these teams that are in the playoff play in tournament because that's where they are that's what they've been throughout the season and that's what put them in the position to be in the play in tournament to begin with they have a lot of experience obviously a lot of championship experience championship coaching but are you going to put it all together to win multiple series against yep. teams that have played well have a lot of talent are, are healthy young like the, the experience matters up until the point that you you have to do it consistently right and that is the question that i have with with really all of these teams you think they're done you said cooked right cooked i'm changing the question i don't, I don't, I don't think we're cooked <laughs> I, I think it's more like like we're preparing for the microwave right because we're not done yet for the microwave you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like you take the oodle dog. noodles, the yeah. wrapper off, yeah. right? You, you put the little water in. So we're at the yeah. stage of putting the water in it. Okay. And then we're walking yeah, slowly to the, okay. to the microwave. Gotcha. So we still, it's, it's still a shot. Gotcha. That, that somebody might say, hey, Shady, you want some DoorDash? He's like, yeah, you throw that away. And then, so I'll say this. We not cooked, but we ain't in the great spot. Great. But we are that team that you can never put us or doubt us, right? I look at the... What year is that? 2023? 20, 22? 20, 21, 22. 21, yeah. 22. Nobody thought we were going to be in a, a, a champion. Mm. Let's keep it real, though. A champion? Yeah. After Kevin Durant left? Yeah. Nobody thought that. It was, ain't no way they're going to win. Mm -hmm. We kept winning and winning and winning. And then when we got to the finals, ain't no way they're going to beat this Boston team. All these superstars got over there. They play uh, two-way players, offense, defense, all the length, all the size. And what we do? We didn't go to no seven games? Six. At show crit. So I'll <laughs> say this. For the Warrior fans like myself out there, we still got a shot. Yeah. We might not be where we want to be, but they ain't gonna, we not where we not supposed to be. They ain't gonna. <sighs> the food is in the microwave. Oh, we, it's in there? Uh, it's in, in there? the microwave. We forgot to press start. <laughs> so they ain't. So, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on a second. I gotta understand this, though. Because you just made a case for, for LeBron James yeah, and the DNA. Lakers and their experience, yeah. and in spite of everything DNA. that we've seen from them this season. Yeah that, that they, they could still get it done. No question. And if I'm not mistaken, DNA. I just saw the Warriors beat the Lakers on their home yep. floor. That did which happen. Is, that did happen. Which, which is the first step mm -hmm. to this entire thing, no which is a play-in game, no most question. likely between those two teams. Yeah, you so you side. have all the faith in the world in LeBron James yes, I do. and the DNA. Lakers, DNA. but you don't no, have I didn't any say no. faith See, that's what I'm saying. I didn't, Steph Curry I didn't the say they were Warriors. cooked. I said it's in their microwave. Okay. We forgot to press start. Championship DNA over there with the Warriors. So I'm not saying they are cooked, but I'm scared. Because right now with these teams in the play-in, I am very scared being the 10th seed that the, the Warriors have to win two of, two of these games. Mm. They have to beat two of these dudes to get into the playoffs. So I am scared. I will never say Steph Curry and the Warriors are cooked because there's too many dudes over there that have experiences, that have won championships, including the coaches. So I'm not ready to say they're cooked, but I am scared. The food is in the microwave <laughs> and... and Anybody could press start. Your kids, uh, <laughs> the why, whoever, girlfriend, yeah. walking, could press start and say, I started your food. That's, <laughs> that's where the Warriors oh, are right they now. Nice you know video. what I'm saying? Is, is, so is they the got to get it together because they the did not look good last night. Is the night. microwave really cooked, though? Is that cooked food? Depends on yeah. how long you're putting it in there for. I mean, if it's raw, that might not be the way you want to go. But I'm saying. If it's leftovers, you're good, you're good to you go. When you press start, yeah. You cooking that food, whatever's in there. Jay. I blame Heller for this, yeah. <laughs> this analogy. Coming up, the Chiefs lifted the Lombardi Trophy again, but are we picking them or the field next season? That's next on Speak. The Chiefs are back-to-back -back Super Bowl champions and can become the only team in history to three-peat. Mm. Current odds have them in second place with the Niners in the number one spot. The Niners, Shady. Mm. I'm a little bit disrespectful. Uh, how they, how they, I, I don't get the Vegas stuff, man. <laughs> I was killing them all, all playoffs. I was killing them. Oh, you on Vegas? Chiefs? Cool. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Chiefs an underdog? Bet. I'm doing. This is like, what are we doing here? I don't know. They feel like the, the Niners. And then the, and every year, the Niners do the same thing. They be good and they lose in the. I don't know. Well, are you picking the Chiefs or the field Listen. this season? 
and not because I'm being biased because of Andy Reid and the Chiefs, but nowadays you got to show me. We talk about all these other quarterbacks. Josh Allen's in this year. Josh Allen takes over Patrick Mahomes' throne. Oh, but Joe Burrow was the only quarterback that can beat uh, Patrick Mahomes other than Tom Brady. I'm done with all that. <laughs> I'm going with the Chiefs until they show me otherwise. I don't care if they get rid of Ty or what was his name? The Cheetah? Yeah, Tyreek Tyree Hill. Hill. If, if, if Travis Kelsey just say, you know what? I love my career. I want to... I want to get married to Taylor Swift, right? And he's just retired. I don't care who it is. If Andy Reid's there and Patrick Holmes is there, I'm betting with them boys. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me the question, yes, I'm going with the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. I don't want the field, right? Yeah, you can have all 31 teams. I want one team in red. <laughs> you got something? You got news for us? Nah. Is that happening? No. No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me knock on wood. That might be an invitation. Because they in love, love. Let me. It's, <laughs> we don't have the Swifties coming for us on Twitter looking for everybody. Sh Shady has, uh, Shady's tapped in with the Swifties. Shady sources. Yeah, yeah. Shady sources. Shady Swifties Sh sources. Yeah. So you're saying you know nothing about this, just to be clear. No, 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 no. Don't start nah, nah, conspiracy nah, theories. Nah, nah. Um, I think I'm with Shady. Mm. We do a lot. We always talk, like, this is the next team, and this is the up-and-coming team, and this team is on this run, right. and this setting this record. Their offense record, is so bad and, now. You know? Man, I'm done with that. They just keep winning. Mm. And when you're in the middle of a dynasty, yeah. it's just easier to pick them. Yeah. It's, it, imagine, imagine picking against them all season long and they three-peat. Oh, yeah. oh, I forbid it. I can't do it. I gotta, I gotta go with them. I'm gonna get Pat Riley paid, the three-peat. Mm. You got to do it. You got to. Yeah. You got to do it. I know it sounds crazy. There's yeah. 31 other teams. No, Football is so hard. It's so hard to get to a Super Bowl. It's so hard to win a Super Bowl. Oh, it's it so hard, hard to retool. You got to be it healthy. You got to like. You got to win in big moments. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. They yeah. still do it. They do it every which way. Yeah, but doing it twice is not the same as doing it three times. Mm -hmm. I know. We've seen teams yeah. and dynasties yeah. do it two times. We've seen them do it three out of four times. We've seen that. We haven't seen it three times in a row, which yeah. is why... I will take the field. To your point, Joy, I, I don't know who the team is. Mm -hmm. Like, I, don't, I wouldn't put all nobody. my money on the 49ers being that team. Nobody does. Right? Yeah, nobody but, does. But it's simply a matter of attrition, and my two football <laughs> brethren here can speak to this. <laughs> like, you know what those extra games do to you. Mm -hmm. They've played a half a season more mm -hmm. over the last two seasons than anybody else, and it would be... 10 games minimum additional yeah. right. that makes sense. to everybody else. So I just think from an attrition standpoint, yeah. from a physical and mental standpoint, especially when you're talking about a core that relies on Patrick Mahomes and maybe most importantly, the one guy that you mentioned that I do think is a difference maker, which is Travis Kelsey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We, as, as great as I think Patrick is, we've never seen him without Travis Kelsey. Mm -hmm. And we did see Tom Brady without Rob Gronkowski. Mm -hmm. at the very end, and it wasn't the same. Yeah. Now, you could say it was age, it was a number of other things, but the reality is, to me, Kelsey is as germane to their success and to Patrick's success at this point, that if he's not there and at age 35, mm -hmm. age 35, yeah. that's, that's old. Hey, yeah. James, before, before quick, you go, I just want yeah. real quick, because that's a, that's a great point, but I, I just want to poke holes through your, through your, your, your case here. Mm. Was Travis there this year? Yes. Yes. Was he? Yeah. He was there the whole year? He was what there year, when it mattered. What type of year did he have this year? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's, get, let's get to it. What type of year did he have this year? Uh, it was up and down. A lot of drops, right? I've never seen him look like that. Yeah. Agreed. Playoffs look way different, but, but they went through that. Another thing is you look at the wide receiver core, right? These, these dudes is winning games with, with new guys. So if you can win with, with, with the, the normal team you have, that, that you know each other, I know what he's going to do, I know what he's going to do, Tyreek Hill, I know how he's going to play, they win in championships without their best players. When I was there... Andy Reid always has a, a deep threat. That's his thing, right? <laughs> when they got rid of the Cheetah, I said, there's nobody want a champ. A championship, they don't do well, but a championship? Yeah. They did. They offense looked way different. The offense didn't just look different that year. They looked different than any other year that Andy Reid had. He's always a vertical deep threat. That's his thing, right? Mm -hmm. They won a championship looking way different. All short, immediate routes, right? Quick game, running the ball. Okay, fast forward. This year, they look way different. The most drops in football to wide receivers. Normally, Andy Reid loves the draft wide receivers. That's his thing. I need wide receivers. Mm -hmm. He wants to throw the ball. They couldn't throw the ball at all. They focus on the defense. So now you're telling me you don't need a certain formula to win a championship the way you're talking. I agree. You can win a championship everywhere you want to, and that's what makes them so special. If it's Tyreek Hill leaving, if it's Travis Kelsey leaving, 
if it's Chris Jones, whoever it may be, they find a way to win. And that's the beauty about the Chiefs. This is my one pushback on that. Pushback? Travis, no matter how they've played, mm -hmm. has been instrumental in that. Yeah. And he has been on the field. It was up and down. And you can say that it was up and down during the regular You know it was season. up and down. Without question. Mm -hmm. The playoffs, when it matters. Playoffs he ball. When you, like, playoffs he ball. And that, to me, is the question. Like, ball. if he's not there when it matters. We said that before against Tyreek Hill. I don't we know said, how you replaced that. We, we said that up, before. We sat up here all year long, and we said this is the worst mm -hmm. Kansas City Chiefs. Has ever looked. Has ever looked <laughs> under Patty and Andy Reid. And we said that because that's what we was watching. Mm -hmm. The worst Chiefs team under them, too. And they won the dang Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. One. On the roll. Two. Put that in there. <laughs> three. Four. Five. Six <laughs> AFC championship oh, games like, in a row. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Four Super Bowl appearances. This many... was the first year that Patty Mahomes ever had a playoff game on the road. Uh -huh. And we taking the field? Patty Mahomes and Andy Reid have shown us that Bro. we are going to be in this game at our worst. That's, that's what I want everybody to get clear right now. At our worst, we are going to be in this game. And then what do they do in the offseason? You get MVS out of there, and you bring in a much better player in Hollywood Brown to stretch the field. You're getting Rasheed Rice in year number two. I played receiver. In year number one, it is so much going on through your mind. What's the coverage? I got to read the coverage. Oh, shoot, Darrell Rivas is press man to man on me. How am I beat him? What I do? Oh, shoot, Aaron Rodgers just gave me another signal. Now I got to look at the defense again to see how I'm going to run. Everything is moving so fast. In year two, everything slows, slows down. down. And you become a better player. So you saying a better Hollywood Brown who was better than MVS. You saying a better Rasheed Rice who was a really good player for them this year. You saying a Travis Kelsey on the other side. This team right here with Pacheco in the backfield, the way they play defense, slick change your answer, man. Don't go with the field. No, go I, I with can't. Patty Mahomes and the Kansas City and, Chiefs because they are going to be much and better lastly, real this quick, year. Do you believe in uh, momentum? Yes. What you think the hell they got right now? Oh, <laughs> you won. You won with that type of roster. But you've got to go through an entire new season again to get all the way there. They done did that. They done did that. In a row, uh, uh, they did it yeah, sexy. Why? They did it ugly. <laughs> they did. Okay, so 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 for all that, are we saying that the Kansas City Chiefs are the greatest team in football history? Perhaps. Like it. Perhaps. They've set it up as such. Huh? You going there? They up there. They, they, they up there. Like it. It's a lot of great arguments. It depends what you like, right? Because some people might love defense. Some people might love a strong running game. Some people might like, like, it's all different ways that you might like, right? But you can't say that they not up there with them. They got everything you need. I, I, I will and say they, that. One thing, no, that, makes no, no, no. One thing that makes them different from other teams, though, is that like the, when the Cowboys were running things in the 90s, they had a, a formula how they going to win, mm -hmm. right? Even with the Niners, they had a formula how we going to sure. win. Sure. The Chiefs don't have no formula. I thought it was, we gonna throw this ball, we gonna do offense first. Nah, not this one, we gonna play defense. Yeah. Okay, two things. One, again, the two different ways that they've played, Travis Kelsey is instru instrumental to those. Mm -hmm. And I can't, I, look, well, for football, I hate to, those, I right? hate to be there. He's gonna be there. He ain't not like he for two years. He's saying like he married for like two years. He's, <laughs> Swift on shit. Sure you don't have new Swift is on, she on tour right now. She's making her own money. She's a billionaire, let me get my money. He was up and down money. last year. Mm -hmm. This yes, was, was a year ago, and now we got another year, and you're telling me he's gonna be as good or better. Well, what did he say, Joy? What did Andy Reid say about that? Because he's yeah. saying how Cal uh, Kelsey had a slow year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He said they needed someone was... to play in the middle. Yeah. He wasn't in the position that he's normally they got in. They that now. Okay. They have that now. I, I, what, listen, <laughs> what you're saying is perfectly reasonable. It is not It's respectable. It's respectable. It's perfectly reasonable. That's why I'm here. It is much more That's reasonable, in reasonable. fact, to say that 31 other teams have a better chance than the Kansas City Chiefs. But sometimes in sports, oh. that's just what it is. It, but sometimes there's Jordans. Sometimes there's Tiger Woods. Yeah. Sometimes there's the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. Oh. And you can take the field if you want to, because there's oh. a whole lot more. But the top is way, 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 way different. And I'm not saying that it is a done deal. But if you're giving me the choice, the way that they looked this year, yeah. I know they ain't going to be that bad next nope. year. Nobody can account for injuries, all right? Yeah. So we are obviously having yeah, this conversation healthy. assuming healthy. that yeah. the top of this team will be healthy, but which, that's is, not which good, is... That's not a good assumption. 
No, it's not. But it, because but it, you're trying to make a third consecutive run. But there's a but reason slick, why teams slick, you only can't, do it two years in a you row. You can't. You can't not account for the injuries that other teams will have as mm, well. That's okay. true. So, 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 so who's to say? Look at look at what happened this year. We had a whole. Oh, we spent a whole six months yeah. talking about that team in New York. Yep. Okay, every day I got to come into work, I drink my coffee, yeah. I get my hair and my makeup done, I get dressed, come up here and talk about Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. Four plays in, it's done, it's a wrap. Yeah. Nobody predicted that, so we don't, we don't know what's going to happen. Oh, We're just having a, a, a conversation based off of the information that we have right now. Oh. And right now, today on March, what is it, 19th, 2024, no. It feels like a safe, a safer the bet to take the Chiefs. The information that we have right now is that nobody has won three Super Bowls in a row. I and what you guys are saying unequivocally yeah. is that the Kansas City Chiefs yeah. are the greatest team that if has ever this, played but, football. But here, because that's the let only me, way that they win three in a row. Let me ask you this, you though. Think like that, though. Let me ask you this, though. Because you're, that's obviously, that's true, right? We are, we are saying that. No, 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 it is true that nobody has won three in a row. But this is a different team. It is. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> if you're considering all the field, right? Because mm -hmm. we talk about this all the time. Who's beating them? That's that's all I'm saying. Right? So so who so who and, and, and not only who's beating them, who else is consistently going and winning? Because it sounds good. It sounds great to have the 49ers be favored. Do you, do you think that the 49ers are going to win the Super Bowl this year? Because I don't think the 49ers well, I, are going to win the Super Bowl on, this I don't year. Need I think that the 49ers have a great a chance. chance of being one of the best teams in the NFC. I don't, but they haven't won yet. Yeah. So we keep making this, these, these the cases team. for all of these teams. Mm. And the only team that is consistently going, yeah, the only exactly. team that is consistently in the AFC Championship game is the Kansas City Chiefs. Because you can make the argument for the Niners. And they do every single year. And they'll do it again this year. And yeah. Vegas is already, is already stating the claim. But they don't win it. And I, I, I kind of understand where you're coming from, Slick, because you're talking about the extra games that these dudes are playing, but they play in these extra games every year. They in the AFC Championship yeah, game every year. Yeah. Some of these teams don't even make the playoffs, and the next year they in the game again, mm -hmm. and the next year they in the game right. again. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because for Travis Kelsey and Patty Mahomes and Andy Reid, the standard is set so high because we're talking about, we did see him drop a couple passes. Mm -hmm. But if the man don't sit out the last game, he needs four yards for a thousand at the tight end spot. And we say drops and we league. saying that is a down year for Travis yeah. Kelsey. Like all these dudes are coming back. That's my thing. My thing is that that, and you have a point, but they won a championship at their worst. That they, that's so so <laughs> next year they they gonna be better. That's scary. And all the 31 other teams, they know it. But here's, I, I, don't know need, it. I don't need, you're not asking me to pick who's going to beat them. All I need is one team that's going to beat the Kansas City Chiefs. And I but actually, and I actually, that, and I actually, who are going to beat? And I actually happen to have who one. Who are going to beat? I happen to have one that's beating them two out, two out of three times. Oh, the Bengals. Oh, can, can I just real quick before we go? <laughs> like, if you just look at the, the, the Chiefs um, um, records, right, the, the backtrack of, their, of the, the, their success the last yeah. six years, it's crazy that they all look so different, right? So I even take last year where they weren't the best team, right? And, and they've been used to playing at home. So if you're used to something all the time, it's like, all right, I'm used to it. Now we're going to go on the road. They didn't know what that looked like. That was one of the biggest questions. Yep. How do you play on the road? And, and for people that never played football or, or haven't played in NFL or not even NFL, it's a big play game. in a big game on the road yeah. is way different. Yeah. Totally different. It's like you against everybody else, right? Do things I had to say, he say, men, Burn the ships, we ain't leaving. <laughs> because the, 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 the mindset is, it's just us against everybody else. It's so loud. You can't get the, the certain calls you want to make. Yeah. You're at a disadvantage. Yeah. So for you to win at your worst and then win on the road, mm. that tells you something. Because I guarantee you next year they're going to be a lot better. And if you, and if you can't get them now, yeah. when they're weak, when they're wounded, yeah. when they're not as experienced, when they're not as good, mm. when they're young babies, yeah. What you do when they when they grow adults? And we're not talking about winning a playoff game on the road, Slick. We talking about winning the whole thing. Super Bowl, oh, two of them on the road. Three of them yeah, in the last yeah, so you, four years. You guys are acting like I'm taking something away from what the Kansas City Chiefs did. Like. Sound like you are. You are Slick. I'm not at all. <laughs> are they going to three beat? Not at all. Are they going to three beat? Are they going to three beat? They, they, they are. No, they're not going to three. See, you taking it from them again. <laughs> oh my. Andy Reid, ain't me, is him. Slick part His of name Vegas. is Slick. Slick part of Vegas. Nobody's ever done it. <laughs> Coming up, LeBron James is battling for a playoff spot. He also just launched a podcast, okay. and you might not believe what he said on the first show. Yeah. That's next on Speed. Yeah. Stay with some good wine. Uh, you got some wine. Yes, yes. You are now entering.
the No Bull Zone, sponsored by Credible. Great rates with none of the bulls. The Lakers blew out the Hawks last night, but off the court, LeBron James has a new podcast with JJ Redick that launched today through his uninterrupted production company. And he already made a headline making a comment that you have to hear. Take a listen. My coaches would just be blown away, and I would just, I, I wouldn't know where it came from. I have no idea. I I think I was born with a sports IQ, mm. and it could have been any sport, but I just think basketball was the one that I, like I was, I chose, and maybe I was chosen to do that as well. Sorry. Sorry, we're having Technical some, we're having some yeah. chair issues. Yeah. Chosen. Are we, wait, hold on, are we just, because they want to make you tall, so right. are, we, are we close? Um, no, no, you are still you significantly are. taller than me. <laughs> Uh, maybe I was chosen. Mm. Rick, do you like, do you love or hate LeBron's maybe I was chosen? And don't hold back. <laughs> I could not hate this more. <laughs> I could not hate this more. There's a big difference between saying I am blessed yeah, yeah. and I am chosen. God is good. Right? There is a big difference mm -hmm. between those two. And he said, I am chosen. And maybe chosen. what's craziest about it is he said, you know, it's amazing, but I would have been this uh, in any sport uh, any. that I had played. Let's talk about it. Say. Come on, man. Come on, bro. Would you show just a little bit of respect R to -E those who have done it? Because you're basically saying, you know what? Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, uh, Go down the list. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a good thing I didn't play football, because uh, you know I don't I don't know. I just I, I I got it. I got it. Look, I I love I, I respect the hell out of what LeBron James has done do. based on where he came from and what he was given, and I do think he is a basketball savant, and he is a, a an amazing individual. But when you make it out like. I am the great, when you announce and say, I am the greatest ever, and this is how I became the greatest ever, there is no ounce of humility in that at all. <clears throat> and that is what I hate. So, I love it. Love it. I don't do humble. It's <laughs> not for me. It's a drag, honestly. And it's disingenuous at that. Everyone has gifts. Some mm -hmm. of us have more than others. Mm -hmm. Some of us were chosen. And LeBron James is one of them ones. Mm -hmm. One of them ones and there's only ever been one LeBron. There will only ever be one LeBron. Okay. For many, 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 many reasons. Not just because of his athletic ability. There's lots of athletic people. He is a brilliant player. He is a brilliant businessman. He has handled the media in a way that I've never seen anyone, not just an athlete, handle media coverage. He's gone through many different versions as a person and still, to this day, shows up as excellence every single time. I could go on and on and on about LeBron James. LeBron James has had chosen tattooed on him since he was, what, 19 years old? This ain't new, it weren't news. There was covers that said the chosen one. We know he's chosen, he is chosen. Look, I know we want to think everything is fair and everyone starts at the same place and we all have the same opportunities. No, no we don't. I'm five foot two. LeBron James is six foot eight. He and I are not the same physical specimen. He is chosen. God said, you get a little bit extra. I know there's billions and billions of other people, but you, this one, I'm gonna spend a little extra time on. If you don't believe in God, then just, he, he made it himself. Whatever it is, LeBron is different, and he's lying if he says he's not. So why do we expect him to be humble? For who? For what? You don't gotta be humble for me. I know how good LeBron James is. I know how special LeBron James is. That's why I enjoy LeBron's career. I enjoy watching him play. I enjoy the content that he gives us and everything else around him because no one else can do what LeBron does and there is no reason for him to be humble. Please don't be humble for me because I, I, I believe you, LeBron. LeBron is chosen. Shady, you have a problem with this? No, I love it, man. Um, what do you, before I even go, what do you like about it? Like, what, what part? Does him saying that, that he was that there's, great? There, there's some of that. I've, I've never heard of all the, the great right. athletes, the yeah. greatest athletes. Yeah. Muhammad Ali, Michael Jordan, oh. Kobe Bryant. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Muhammad, Muhammad yeah. definitely so, said, like, okay. for sure. Like, we, <laughs> I am that's the greatest. Yeah. Hold on. That's right. I am. That's right. He was also. The I am all right. the greatest. That was, that was also in right. boxing. Uh, 
where you all you were also marketing. And it, he said, so, he enough, said, but I am listen, the greatest. If, if you if you listen to his conversations, all of his conversations, I'm a mama leave nothing. He did it. I know it. He did it with the tongue in his tongue in cheek, and he did it. Okay, well, as we, we believed him. He had, he had different swagger. Okay, I was saying, but, than, than, but uh, I don't want to get I don't want to get right. distracted by that. I I I just have never. Look, you can make the argument, we're all chosen in a way. Mm. We're all chosen all right, to do what me, we do and try to be the best. I, I asked you, I said, let me give you my take, all right? I love that, though, because he's, he's right. God took his time making LeBron James. Let's, let's take you back. He's from Akron, Ohio, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if much people don't know about Akron, Ohio, because I didn't know much about it. But LeBron comes up with such a good guy. I'm like, is, is, he, is he from the hood? They say, yo, Akron, Ohio is the hood. Yeah. Cool. 100%. So you take this kid from the ghetto, from the hood, right? Yep. S single mom, right? Yep. And you watch his growth. He is so mature. He was in high school doing the things he was doing. He went from high school to the pros. Most players you see like that, right? A lot of them, they don't really be the most mature, especially financially. They, they, they become the head of the house. He did a great thing with all that. Yep. Then I might want to talk about sports. I'm going to just go to outside of the court. The guy's building up schools. He's giving out scholarships. You don't, you don't have to do none of that stuff. You don't have to do none of that. And LeBron James. Yep. The small thing of when, I don't know if it's Reebok or Adidas try to give him $11 million check, he's in he's the project at 18 years old. Every eight-year-old kid I know is going to take that check. He didn't, though. That's the chosen one type things. <laughs> if you give me $11 million, I'm in the project, I need the money, I don't want it. Because yeah. somebody else has a bigger check for me. And it was Nike. So when I look at LeBron James, there's never been a role model like him. My favorite player was, was Michael Jordan, right? And I think Michael was the greatest best player of all time. But when you talk about the chosen one, LeBron James is 6'9", 250 pounds. He's probably the fastest player in the NBA, and he's like 39 years old. You can't even, you can't even draw a player like that. So if he wanted to play basketball, football, baseball, whatever it may be, soccer, soccer. <laughs> he would have been the greatest ever. The greatest ever, because it's more than just... Come on, James. I, I, played, I played with certain players, right, that were super phenomenal athletes. Like, put them to fit, they're going to kill you, routes, whatever it is. You get to talking football with him, man, I don't know about that, man. This, this put me in the game. Because they mentally don't have it. LeBron has both. He could be your best coach. He could be your best player. And he's shown it. So when he says that he'd have been the, the, the chosen one, he ain't lying. That's who he really is. Yeah. And for you to say that, it's like, I don't know, dog. Yeah. I guess the way he came off, most of the great players, you don't want to say them type of things. But he ain't lying. You know, I, I, I tell my kids all the time, um, don't read your press clippings, right? You tell them that? Don't read your press clippings, right? It's all about what you do the next day, the next game, the next play. Don't Shady McCoy at 300 yards, <laughs> like, yo, me. <laughs> press clippings, right? <laughs> but since LeBron was a youngster in high school, this all we've been saying. This all we've been calling him. Mm -hmm. The chosen one and all that. So I don't mind him getting up there for basketball. I'm not even going to get into the other sports and all that. There's too many greats in them other sports and all that. But for basketball, I truly believe LeBron James is the chosen one. And he should talk with confidence. I don't see nothing wrong with this with you talking with confidence. I coach Little League football. Everybody him. <laughs> I'm him. <laughs> Boy, yeah. you ain't got a catch in the league, none of that. Yeah, you talking about you, him. But that's the confidence of these little kids. I'm him. So I don't mind LeBron James having the confidence to say you are the chosen one. He ha like Joy said, he has it tattooed on him. It's been on plenty of magazines. Everybody has labeled him as that. Everybody has praised him as that since he's been playing this game of basketball. Now he has this platform. I do not mind him saying that at all. That's, that's confidence. I don't even think this comes off as cocky. I just think this is him. Of really what we all know of LeBron James being super smart, because we praise him for being super smart. IQ mm. on the basketball court. Mm. Everybody talks about the way he passes the basketball. He got 40,000 plus points. He's a heck of a basketball player. And like Shady said, not even to talk about the stuff off the court, but LeBron James is truly the chosen one. And you should have confidence with what you have achieved in this lifetime, why, why, why is it playing the game and off the field, that you are the chosen why, one. Why do you keep saying confidence? This is what he, this ain't confidence, this is what he's doing. This is like reality. But he should be confident saying that. I'm, I'm the chosen but, one. But I, what I'm saying is like, everything he's saying and what he's saying is like it's what's true. going on. So like confidence like, yo, I know I'm this, I know I look good, I know I can do this, I know I'm a good player. But like everything he's talking about is actually things I'm doing. Like, I'm, the, I'm one of the best freaking freaks to ever play this game. If I wanted to step into another realm, a different sport, I could do that. In football, in high school, he was All-American and he didn't really play that much. All I'm saying is this, though. We can go down the line of athletes, right? Mm -hmm. But it's hard to find a, 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 a type of athlete that has everything, has the smarts, mm -hmm. has the athletic ability, has the size. 
everything goes in line with LeBron James. But so, what I'm saying, he, like, like Slick is saying, though, I'm saying he should have chosen one. saying it, but we've never seen, we, you believe Michael Jordan the greatest basketball player? Yeah. And we've never heard Michael Jordan come out consistently and say, I'm the greatest. Never. We, yeah, we, we never all, have, we, we, but I'm just saying, I mean, so. I we know what, we know what LeBron, what Michael Jordan thinks about himself. No doubt. It's, it's not, my thing is, why do we don't, we always want people to put themselves on our level. LeBron's better than us, okay? He's better. It's okay. We don't all, we're not all on the same level. And it, it, there's this thing in society where, like, yeah. our greats have to be humbled. No, they don't. No, no, they do no, not. No, no, no. LeBron James is better than you. <laughs> at basketball, <laughs> he would be better than you at football. Uh, there are very few people on the planet wait, who, could go, who could play multiple sports, and we know they would be great at them. To say that he would be better than Tom Brady, if you want to argue no, that, that, fine. That's what he was saying. Of course. Well, he didn't, oh, he was, well, well we, didn't, we didn't say my quarterback. I don't know what it looked like. That's the truth. I don't know. I'm just but saying, I was, if there was, was somebody who could like say it, if he would say it and I believe it, so you're saying that LeBron James, it's you don't think LeBron right, James right, could, right, could, right, could right, have yeah. played football and been one of the best tight ends to ever play football? He, no. he would have had a chance. He, 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 you don't not, not know that either, though. You don't not so know. you're but right because he did it. Fact, he wouldn't have been like Tom Brady and them boys. Have you seen throwing ball? Yes. Hey, I'm not saying hold on. It's eight. How many people in the world? Hey, what is it? Eight billion people in the world? What is it? How many people in the world? It don't matter. Like eight billion? Yes. Next week, LeBron James cures cancer. No, but I'm saying, that's a lot of people, though, right? Hey, and I'm thinking, what are we saying? For new to be the, all the people in the world, why did God make him just so different? I, you ever think about that for a second, though? Seriously, 8 billion people in the He's world, special. right? He's special. He's special. He's chosen. Out of all these people yeah. in the world God has made, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, of our likeness and his likeness and all that. Yeah. All these James Jones, all everybody. No. Got them smarts. We can't all be made in the same way. So, but but, but I'm, what I'm saying is, out of all them people in the world, 8 billion, though, why is he made so different? Yeah, he chose that, even Michael Jordan was special. Yeah. But he ain't made different like LeBron. Eight billion? He's special that in that basketball. Eight, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm saying, if you just look at him, no, I'm just talking about all, from the from head oh, man, what, what, to what, what, toe. From head to toe, as you, far as the smarts and the, and the athletic ability and all that, eight billion people. He, God made LeBron way. So he had, he all, he had he had all that. What's the sperm donors part? called? The sperm donors. He had all that at the very beginning. Sperm <laughs> Listen, he if LeBron giving, James would have retired, and he, right out of the gate, he want to make he no, want to make a hundred thousand dollars. This is the heart. A of minute, it. you no. get the sperm donor, and they gonna pay it. Cause I'm gonna pay it. Yo, yo. This is the heart of it. This is the heart of it. Is that LeBron James is saying I was this at eight years old. Say it again. No, he's saying I was this at eight years old. Mm -hmm. No, you weren't. I the believe family it. that took you, the what? family that took you in, the coaches that you had. Oh, right? We can go to Pat Riley. We can go to all what? the people Slick. that helped shape LeBron James into who he. And how did he help them? What he did? He did okay. his part, what? but he Slick. didn't do it by himself. Slick, no, nobody. Say, he's not even saying that. We gonna give Eric Spoelstra some he's credit say, for LeBron he's James. That he was really smart. What? He's always yeah. understood the game, and if he chose a different sport, he would understand that game as well. We are adding all these extras. Boy, I was and, and I, no, you guys are adding it. You're adding the all quote, these assumptions. The quote is: "My coaches would be blown away. I would. I wouldn't know where it came from. I have no idea. I think I was born with a sports IQ. All of it. And it could have been any sport. I was a genius at eight years old, and no matter what I have. There done, are I geniuses, though. There are geniuses. There are kids that know how to play the piano like uh, like it's nothing. There's people that know how to split." The Adam, we're not all the same. It's yeah. okay. It's LeBron, LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron LeBron James is the chosen hey, listen, one, but he ain't playing that You already know I ain't apologizing <laughs> for me, so LeBron shouldn't either. <laughs> the sports world was buzzing last night over Anthony <laughs> Edwards' so dunk. Could the Timberwolves star be the next face of the NBA? That's next. Let's speak. I think I'm done. Hey, go said it best. Some people win, some people lose. That's no. not me. <laughs> We gotta talk about that dunk. Uh, you've had some good ones. There we go. Another turnover for Utah. Edwards gets it back and threw it down. And one from the Raptors. That was ridiculous. We're awaiting gravity back into Delta Center. Ah! Oh my God. Hey, that was my best dunk of my career, I'm not gonna lie. Highlight real dunk last night. Anthony Edwards, he's among the top young talent in the NBA that's leading the next wave of superstars. And earlier today, Ant got the stamp from Michael Jordan, who mm. told our very own Chris Broussard that he sees similarities between Ant-Man and himself. Ooh. So that's got to count for something. Wow, he said that? Yeah. Ant-Man got a shoe deal? 
I see what you're doing, Mike. Hey, you boy, Mikey <laughs> almost got me. Hey, man, Adidas. Is he with Adidas? Yeah. Oh, hey, is his contract almost up? His shoe good. Because he's trying to bring, he's trying to bring him over. <laughs> he's trying to bring him over. He got a nice shoe too. Could he be the next face of the NBA, Rick? He could be. He could be. He has what uh, Jordan suggested. He has that dynamic game, and he has the personality. He has the charisma. Uh, he's got a lot of growing up to do as far as his game is concerned. I mean, if you look at the Timberwolves prior to getting Mike Conley and Kyle Anderson, like those, when, when you're not the, the, the driving force and decision maker on your team and you haven't done enough winning, there's a lot to be uh, accomplished there Dang. for him to get there. So does he have the raw ability? Yes, he does. Boom. But there's also... There's a couple other guys coming for that crown, and God. it's a matter of who's going to get there first. He's so fun to watch. Shady, what do you think? I haven't done that since high school. Uh, uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Could Anthony Edwards be the next face of the you NBA? You know what? I I'm going to say yes. He he's, he's American, right, in the NBA. You know they love to have the Americans uh, be the face of the NBA. Mm. Um, I can see him on commercials, right? I think he has to grow up a little bit off the court. But, yeah, I love Ant-Man. I love his, his aggressiveness. I love his attitude. I love the way he approaches the game. Um, he has a sense of humor, a little swagger, so I would say yes. Absolutely. You're talking about a young player that is a hot ticket. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing a man can't do. He can cross you, shoot it, dunk on you, pass it. There's nothing... And he, he plays defense. And he plays yes, defense. He does. There's nothing that Ant-Man can't do. You can put him on commercials, because he's a handsome-looking dude, Pauls. Oh. But you can put him on commercials. Absolutely, he could be the face of the franchise. Who ain't going to want to come watch Ant play the back? Come watch Ant-Man. He's also really well-liked. Yes, like, he is. By yeah. other that players, too. by yeah. fans, by media. Like, yeah. he is just a really fun watch. I don't know that there will ever be another face of the NBA, because I think the... The marketplace has changed a lot. It was, it was a bigger conversation. I don't know that one particular player will hold it the way that LeBron, Kobe, Michael, have, Shaq, like, have really dominated the conversations, but he certainly has a chance. He's I will say the playoffs really will be huge for him, though. Yes, yep. yes. And, and, and it also huge. has to do with what, what you do in the postseason. Everybody be able to really see him play. Yep. Yeah. And, and he competes. Players yes. nowadays, no one wants to compete. Well, winning plays a big role in this as well. Coming up, Keenan Allen and DJ Moore are a new combo for the Bears, but do they make our top three wide receivers duo list? That's next on Speed. The Bears added six-time Pro Bowler Keenan Allen, and he'll now be paired up with DJ Moore. Allen said, quote, they can be really special. James, who are your top three wide receiver Ooh, duos? Right they now? are going to be special. My top three tandems right now, though, number one, I got Reek and Waddle. Waddle can run any route you want. We all know Tyreek Hill right now is arguably the best receiver in the National Football League. I got them at number one. Number two, everything goes as planned. I got Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, <laughs> oh, right? Wonderful. Number two. And then at number three, I got Smitty and I got A.J. Brown. We all know. But these duos right here, they, they could play some ball. But I love T. Higgins, Jamar Chase sitting at number two, A.J. Brown uh, and Devontae Smith. Why you, why you, why you, why you, why you ain't switch those? Switch who? The Philadelphia Eagles and the, and, and the uh, Bengals. Just curious. No, no, no. I, I like Chase. No, I, said, I said, why didn't you? Oh, that's what I'm about to, I'm about to tell you. Yeah, I like Chase um, to do everything over there. I believe Chase is better than A.J. Brown at the wide receiver spot. Oh, I truly, real. truly do. We can have a conversation about that. Hey, and then T. Mark. Higgins is that dude, too. Coming up, speaking of receivers, Netflix is moving from quarterbacks Ooh. to receivers this summer. Our resident receiver, James Jones, has some thoughts on that. Mm. Stay with us here on Speak. See, you don't worry about none of that. We all watched Netflix series quarterback last summer. Now they're switching to receivers. Debo Samuel, George Kittle, Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, and Amon Ross St. Brown will all be featured this summer. Shady, what's your reaction to Netflix's receiver series? You know what? I, I, I'm kind of upset they didn't bring that thing to Philadelphia at all, right? But then I thought about it. Our main thing is the main thing. That's a change. Uh, so, but I, but I, I'm going to watch it, though, because yeah, yeah. I love all them young dudes up there. Deep, I love all them guys up there, man. I love this. I love that they're doing all of the, the positions. And we know receivers. Yeah. Y'all. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it, because, I mean, it brings the fans into what we deal with. Yeah. Off the field as well, you know, juggling a bunch of stuff. But to be honest with you, I would have loved to see Kittle in a tight end you one with Travis Kelsey and those tight ends. Me too, yeah, right, 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 right. Because right. I think that one would really, really be good. That's <laughs> the, the tight end. The tight end really cheap. Well, well, I'm sure they're going to do that also, but now I won't have Kittle on it. But I'm excited for this. It'll be great. Thanks for hanging with us. That's it. For